the victim of Donald Trump's corrupt and powerful system. If they can do this to me, they can do this to anyone. These are bad people. These are, in many cases, I believe, sick people. When you look at our country, what's happening where millions and millions of people are flowing in from all parts of the world, not just South America, from Africa, from Asia, from the Middle East, and they're coming in from jails and prisons, and they're coming in from mental institutions and insane asylums, and they're coming in from all over the world into our country. And we have a president and a group of fascists that don't want to do anything about it because they could right now, today, he could stop it. But he's not. They're destroying our country. Our country is in very bad shape. And they're very much against me saying these things. Uh, they want to raise your taxes by four times. They want to stop you from having cars with their ridiculous mandates that make it impossible for you to get a car or afford a car. It make it very possible for China to build all of our cars. It's a very serious problem that we have. We just uh, went through one of many experiences where we had a conflicted judge, highly conflicted. There's never been a more conflicted judge. Now, I'm under a gag order, which nobody's ever been under. No presidential candidate's ever been under a gag order before. I'm under a gag order, nasty gag order, where I've had to pay thousands of dollars in penalties and fines and was threatened with jail. Think of it. I'm the leading candidate. I'm leading Biden by a lot, and I'm leading the Republicans to the point where that's over. So I'm the leading person for president, and I'm under a gag order by a man that can't put two sentences together, given by a court. And they are in total conjunction with the White House and the DOJ, just so you understand. This is all done by Biden and his people. And maybe his people, more importantly. I don't know if Biden knows too much about it. Because I don't know if he knows about anything. But he's nevertheless the president, so we have to use his name. And this is done by Washington. And nobody's ever seen anything like it. Questions surrounding the immense power held by large institutions, governments, and judicial systems are increasingly spotlighted in the narrative against Donald Trump. Many conservatives believe in a corrupt elite manipulating the deep state, echoing Trump's message. If they can do this to me, they can do this to anyone. This sentiment is a testament to conservatives' resilience and determination in facing perceived injustices. Despite ongoing controversies, Trump remains a prominent figure in the polls, embodying the fight against individualism and injustice. The public discourse often frames this as a struggle for authenticity, with Trump symbolizing the pursuit of personal meaning truth and justice against a corrupt system. Despite facing a gag order, Trump continues to voice his opinions, resisting external pressures to remain silent. His narrative of individual freedom and responsibility aligns with the belief in confronting oppression and taking accountability for one's actions against an indifferent or hostile world. Analyzing Trump's remarks reveals a psychological strategy to position himself as a victim of corruption, seeking sympathy and solidarity from his supporters. This creates a strong internal group dynamic where language like bad people, sick people, and fascists dehumanizes opponents and heightens awareness of perceived threats, thereby strengthening group cohesion and resolve. Emotional triggers such as fears of immigration or economic instability are amplified, portraying immigrants as criminals, and the government is failing to protect its citizens thus motivating public support through fear and a sense of urgency.